Hello and welcome to the Tulare Public Library. Today's resource spotlight video will focus on the genealogy database Ancestry.com. We feel so lucky that our patrons have free access to Ancestry with use of their library card. Today's video will just be a brief introduction about how to get started. If you have any further questions, please feel free to give our library staff a call at 559-685-4500, as we're all invested in making sure that you understand how to use the tools that could benefit your family history research. So I'm starting here at our website, which can be found at tulerepubliclibrary.org. On our home page, you can scroll down and click on research and databases. There are two places that we can find the link to Ancestry.com. The first is under the Do It Yourself drop down. If you can't remember what specialized list that Ancestry is listed under, the catch all is to look under complete list of databases, wherein all of our online databases are listed alphabetically. So I'm going to click on Ancestry.com here. If you're accessing from home for the first time, it will require you to enter your library card number. Since I've already logged in, it's taken me past that. Um, but remember that you will have free access once you enter your library card number. So you'll see that we're in the Tulare Public Library subscription. Um, keep in mind, and this is fresh in my mind because I was just discussing with a patron, you will be using Ancestry.com for self-guided research. Because we have a library subscription, this will not be a place that you can upload your own family tree, but I will show you a place that you can download your own forms and then use the, um, the huge database of information, historical documents, census information, things like that that you can find in the database to fill in um, the gaps of your family tree. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to show you is under charts and forms. For anyone that is launching their family history research journey, what you want to make sure to do is have records of everything that you are finding out, discovering, and connecting. So you'll notice that there are quite a few charts um, under charts and forms that you can download or print from the convenience of your home. We have a research calendar, a correspondence record, family group sheet, um, and I'm gonna take a look at this ancestral chart because this is a very common form um, to keep records for your family tree. So I'm gonna click download form, and you'll notice this is where I can enter the names, the birth dates, the, the marriage dates um, of everyone in my family tree. If you go to the top left, you can either download this form to your computer or you can print it from your home computer. So those are two different options for you. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my charts and forms. In addition to all of these family trees and research charts, if you click on census forms, you will also see that you can download a blank copy of a census form, whether from the US, the UK or Canada. So I'm just gonna choose the 1940 census form um, for the US download. Now keep in mind that census records are only released after 72 years. So the most current or the most recent census that's available for public consumption is the 1940 census. So as you'll see here, there is a blank sheet that if for whatever reason you are doing or conducting census research, this is one of the forms that you could download, again, in the top right, download or print and use. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my charts and forms. Um, really great starting place if you're just launching your family research history. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is this learning center. I think this is a really great place to start if you're new to Ancestry.com. And it also has a lot of valuable resources for people that are also new to um, conducting genealogy research in general. So you'll notice a couple of different categories. Under getting started, I have this great article top, called Top 10 Search Tips. If I click here, it's gonna take me to an article that has both basic, intermediate, as well as advanced tips for launching my family history search. Um, things like this are really helpful, um, you know, if I'm looking for a good starting place. So I'm gonna go back here. They also, under the census section, have 10 census tips. Um, follow your family using census records. 
Beyond the basics, they have things such as five military favorites, cemetery research primer. Um, I always thought this article was quite interesting. Black sheep, 10 things to know. So say that you have a shadier character in your family history. Um, this are, these are tips and tricks for working around that and really digging in um, to discover family, um, family history mysteries, if you will. <laughs> so I'm going to go back here. Um, we also have things such as 10 things to know about passenger lists, find your Civil War ancestors, and under the ethnic um, section here, we have tips and tricks for finding historical records for family, family members um, whose information may be harder to find for a variety of reasons. So if I go to African American family research here, I'm going to get um, information on where to start with dates, um, you know, working backwards, common tips and tricks to help um, uncover those, those those um, family connections that may be a little bit harder to track down. Um, I also noticed there's a Native American research section here, same thing, an article um, that will really give you a sense of, of how to launch your journey if that is part of your heritage. All right, so, um, okay, so that's research aids. The other thing I wanted to show you is maps. So say I'm looking at a particular state. I know that I had family there decades ago, but I'm not exactly sure where. The great thing about this section is, say I wanna look at California. I can click on the state and it's going to give me statistical information and data that is specific to that geographical region. So I have California vital records, California census records, land ownership records, um, county resources, things like that. And then it also gives you a little bit information of information about statehood um, and statistics for the actual state, which is pretty interesting. All right, so that is our learning center. Next, I wanted to show you the home page. There's a couple things I wanted to point out. So whether you're looking for birth and death records, military history, immigration, you know, passenger lists, um, census, there are all of these quick searches here. Same thing with quick links at the bottom, whether you're looking for city directories, um, reference dictionaries and almanacs. Um, there's also a quick link to U.S. Census record by year. Um, so launching from the homepage is always a good way to go. And I also wanted to point out that there are over 262 million obituaries available from newspapers.com that you now have access to through Ancestry Library. So I'm going to click here. And if you're looking for a particular obituary, you could enter the first and last name, um, any location the person may have lived, familial connections, any keyword that you're looking for and search the obituary here. Okay, so now I wanted to show you the basic search function. There's a couple things that I wanted to point out here. So we have a search function of exploring by location. Similar to the maps under the Learning Center, if you were interested in a particular state or a particular region, you could search here. If you were looking for ancestors, say that I suspected I had family um, that was Chilean. So I'm gonna click on South America, Chile, and then it will give me all of the records that have been uploaded to Ancestry.com that's related to that country or region. So if you're doing research for family members outside of the U.S., this is a great feature um, to help point you in the right direction. The other thing I wanted to show you were the quick links for special collections. So this is the place that if you're looking for birth or baptism records, marriage and divorce paperwork, um, census, information, passenger lists, military service. These are other quick links where you can go straight there. So if I click on US Federal Census Collection, it's going to take me to a search, search engine that I can either enter my own terms or it will give me quick links here at the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to search. So again, these are my quick links. One that I wanted to point out that I have found to be so enjoyable is, under photos and maps, I have this picture section here. So I'm gonna click on pictures. 
And what I have access to through Ancestry Library is this fabulous um, data collection of photographs. They have Library of Con Congress photo collection, passenger ships and images, historical postcards, Civil War photos, African American photo collection. Um, so let's do Library of Congress photo collection. And just for the sake of searching, I'm going to look up San Joaquin Valley. Now, you can use this photo search um, while you are searching your family history, but I find that it's also just a really fascinating database if you're curious about local history, um, about something particular in our area. Um, I've just had fun browsing through these um, because it's quite a special thing to have access to the, to the Library of Congress and all of these special exhibitions. So um, let's click on this first one here, Loading Cotton, Southern San Joaquin Valley. I see that this, this photo was taken about 1936. And if I click here, it'll take me into it. And then I can click view here and it should show me and then using this toggle on the side, I can either zoom in, which it looks like it's all the way zoomed in, or I can zoom out to get a better sense of the photo. Just incredible. Um, so if I was interested in saving this photo, I could do it here. I could save it to my computer. Or if I exit, I can always send myself, let me click on this one more time. I can always send information to my email address via this send document button here. So if I click here, you'll see that I can enter my email address, send an email to myself, and it will have the, the data or the photograph that I found as an attachment. So I just love that. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, Okay, so I'm going back to search. So last but not least, um, you know, you can use the map, the special collections, or I can simply search for a family member's name. So um, this is no one in my family, but I'm just gonna use a really generic name here, Mary Smith. If I wanted the search to um, filter by exact name, I could click exact here. Sounds like similar initials, but if I'm curious in, in um, you know, anything that's close to Mary Smith coming up, then I can leave that box unchecked and I can search here. If I had a birth year or a place that the ancestor might have lived, that just helps um, in an advanced search. But let me just see what comes up here. So what you'll notice is it's going to give you search results for everything that was close to Mary Smith. So you'll notice that it gives me a clickable link that I can click into the record. And right below in all caps, it will give me a sense of what umbrella that information is under. So this is going to be birth, baptism, and christening records. If I go down further, you'll see that citizenship records are included. Um, anything that's close to Mary Smith has come up here. So again, let's just for the sake of um, demonstration, click in here. If I'm interested in the image, I could click view, I could send the document to myself, or I could scroll down to understand the source citation, source information, original data, and description. All right, and I can go back to all results. So I know this has been a very brief run through, um, but I just wanted to give you a sense of some of the primary search functions here in Ancestry. I will show you one more. Um, because we are on the library subscription, patrons will not have the option of adding to the message boards, um, but what they can do is search the message boards. So you can search by name or historical period, a particular um, event in history. You can search by um, letter for surname or last name, or you can search by category. So I'm just gonna take a, a shot in the dark here and I'm gonna click on Australia. I see that there should be three message boards for Australia. So let's click in there. And as I'm looking at my different Australia subcategories, I see that there are 11 message boards for Queensland. That looks kind of interesting. So let's click there. And then I see that there are quite a few messages. Let's click into Brisbane here and see what we have going on. So these are all of the different message boards on this topic. This looks kind of interesting. William Mulvey, did he abandon his family in England and flee to Australia? So I'm going to click there. And what I find is that one of the Ancestry.com um, patrons looks like they posted an update quite recently 
um, and noted that I think I have found a family tree scandal. So if you are looking for a particular person, a particular geographical area, then using the message boards to get more information is always another great resource. As someone who is definitely interested in family history myself, I just found it interesting to come in here and read about um, people's different scandals or mysteries. Um, definitely makes for interesting reading. So I, I encourage you to explore that as well. Um, and that is the message board feature. So again, I know this has been really brief, but I just wanted to give everyone a general idea of all the places that you can start. There are so many great features here on Ancestry Library, whether you are just beginning your family history um, research or you are more of a seasoned expert. Um, there are definitely, uh, definitely resources here that can help people of all, of all experience levels. So hope this was helpful. Stay tuned for future resource spotlights and let us know here at the library if you have any questions about how to further use our Ancestry Library subscription. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you.